Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you how I pack and ship all my greeting cards for both retail and wholesale. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Sarah and I've been running this small stationery business out of my home for the past three years. A few years ago I made this video right here talking about how I pack and ship all my Etsy orders and I decided it was about time to update that video. Since filming that video a lot has changed in terms of how I run my business and especially when it comes to my actual products I've iterated and and improved on a lot of different things. I also want to preface this video by saying that nothing about my current practices are final or the best way. I find that every season as I run this business, I make small iterative changes to better optimize and to have the best product and experience for my customers as well. All right, so to give you guys a little bit of background, greeting cards were my first ever products. I launched Sail of Paper back in 2020 with a series of Christian sympathy cards. And all of these cards featured original calligraphy as well as my own watercolor paintings. Over the years, my greeting card collection has expanded to almost a hundred different SKUs. And while I have grown in different categories, such as tote bags, notebooks, stickers, bookmarks, greeting cards are still the backbone of my business. Greeting cards still tend to be my best selling products. And even when it comes to the vision of my business, greeting cards still play the biggest role. I love the idea of people being able to use my cards to send encouraging notes to one another. They will always be a big part of my business. Currently, I have two different greeting card sizes, but this A2 size is the standard and most popular size in our shop. The other cards I carry are Monarch cards, which are a bit longer, and these were designed specifically to hold cash or checks for weddings and other gift ideas. Today, I'm gonna be focusing more on the A2 size, and this is more of an industry standard size. All right, so let's get right into it. When you're running a product-based business, it's really important to consider how you're gonna package and ship your product earlier on in your design process. Because I wanted my cards to be sold in other stores, it was important for my branding and the skew of the product to be visible in the final packaged form. Obviously, this can be done in the form of a sticker or like an insert, but I wanted all my SKUs and my logo to be very visible on the actual product itself. So for every single greeting card, I actually have my logo, a website, and the SKU of the product on the back. For consistency, all my greeting cards are blank inside and the artwork just sits on the front face of the card. Most of my card designs are portrait, but I do have some in landscape form as well. Over the years, I realized that it's a lot easier to merchandise and shelve portrait cards because they take up less shelving space and it's easier to see the design when they're standing up like this versus if I have a card that's sideways like this, it takes up a lot more space on the shelf and especially when space is limited, having these two cards side by side takes up a lot more space than having two portrait cards side by side. So I mean, obviously it's okay to have landscape cards, but I do try to keep most of my designs vertical like this. Let's talk envelopes. So currently I have a handful of different envelope colors that I like to use. And to be honest, this is not very efficient. It would be a lot easier to just have one craft or white or off-white colored envelope to go along with every single card. But it brings me a lot of joy to match a specific envelope color to a specific design. So for example, this birthday card gets like a sand colored envelope while this wedding card gets a baby blue envelope. This baby card gets a pink envelope like that. And I have some designs such as this one that gets a really nice metallic gold envelope. When it's Christmas time, I also use a lot more of the gold envelopes as well as this really beautiful crimson red envelope. Again, this might be something I have to optimize later on when I scale, but for now, I really do enjoy having these different colored envelopes. And for my own sake, I've limited the number of colors to around five or six colors that I use day to day. Whenever I pack my cards, the envelopes always go inside my card and this allows the back of the card to still be visible even with the envelope. I actually like that the envelope is a little bit bigger because you can see the color of the envelope peeping through and this is important in terms of wholesale because again you want the customer to be able to see everything on the shelf without having to open up any packaging. So let's talk packaging. For wholesale all my cards get put into this plastic sleeve and this one actually doesn't have a flap. So it's the no flap bag from Clear Bags and when you're sleeving hundreds of cards for a big wholesale order it's a lot easier to just be able to slip them in without the flap. However for the majority of my business I actually used flapped clear bags and honestly that takes so much longer like having to close each bag individually so these no flap bags are the way to go for me now for my monarch cards I actually have a matching monarch envelope these just come in one color and these guys still go in a bag that has a flap 
So as you can see here, there's a plastic liner that you have to remove before you can close the bag shut. And it's just an extra step when it comes to packing. So I like that I have transferred over to no flat bags for the most part. For wholesale, every single card will get its own plastic sleeve so that the retailer can sell them and shelve them. I have definitely considered going plastic free because obviously I want to reduce the amount of plastic I'm using in my business. However, I have found that plastic is the best way to go when I'm selling wholesale only because it really protects the card, especially when many people are touching the card, picking it up from the shelf. And if a card doesn't sell for weeks or months, like you're going to have a lot of hands on this item that the retailer paid for. I've seen a lot of people go plastic free by using a little sticker label that holds the card and the envelope together. But again, in stores, I find that the card experiences a bit of wear and tear over time when it's not protected. The other thing is that it can easily get damaged in transit. So things like water or any of the other elements. When it comes to retail, it's not as important to have every card individually wrapped because the customer is buying directly from my business and they are the ones likely using the end product. If a customer orders a single card, they'll get it in a plastic sleeve just so that it's protected on the way. But most of the time, customers who place orders on my shop buy around four or more cards. If they buy four cards, I will put them in a plastic sleeve that's a little bit bigger. So this size accommodates four cards. Or if they're more of a local order, then I will put their cards in this paper bag. So this again reduces plastic when I find that it's not necessary and if the cards aren't going to be traveling a long distance. I also sell box sets of cards on my shop. This is an example of my compassion card collection and it's basically a plastic box like this that holds eight to 10 cards with the envelopes. I find that these plastic boxes are the best for wholesale because people can actually see what's in the box. But when it comes to my direct customers, I will try to use a paper box wherever I can. These are just a lot harder to assemble. For box sets that are getting sold wholesale, I have these label stickers that I like to use and I just place them on the top corner of every box so that again, customers can see my branding and know what is actually inside the box. All right, let's talk shipping. For this portion, I'm not gonna talk about wholesale because wholesale orders tend to be larger and so they just get shipped in a cardboard box. When it comes to my own retail shop, I have a few different packages that I like to use depending on the size of the order. So if a customer is ordering more local and they've ordered four or less cards, there is a letter mail option. And so those get put into this paper envelope. It doesn't really have any structure and it's a flimsy envelope, but when the cards are with the envelope, and especially if there's a stack of cards, I find that I've never had a bending issue. So these will just go in here and I'll just put a stamp on this envelope. But the most common way I like to ship my greeting cards is by using this rigid mailer. I buy all my rigid mailers from Uline and this is a six by eight mailer and these can hold probably four to five cards as well. The nice thing about this is that these get shipped as a parcel. There's tracking on the shipping and because it's rigid, it really protects the cards from bending even though they rarely do bend. If a customer buys more than four cards or a box set of cards, I have these padded mailers that just offer a little bit more vertical space. So this will easily take a box set of cards. These are also made from 100% recycled materials and they fit my notepads, my notebooks, my tote bags. So I really do love these mailers. If a customer buys multiple boxes or if their order includes other items that are bigger, I like to use these Uline boxes. They fold up kind of like a pizza box and the different sizes allow me to stack up to around 10 of these box sets. The last thing I want to touch on before I end this video is branding and your packaging. Today's video was really focused on the practical side of how to get your greeting card out to your customer. But one of my favorite things about this job is the ability to add little bits of delight and joy into the final experience for the customer. And a large part of that is adding those touches to your packaging. I like to add a little postcard to every single order that has a nice little note and some instructions on how to recycle all the different pieces that I send to their house. And that allows me to personally address my customer and give a little bit more information on how to properly recycle all the materials that I'm sending to their house. I also like to use tissue paper and logo stickers as well as branded packaging tape to make the overall package look a lot more colorful and a lot more intentional. I think something that I'm always trying to keep in mind is that fine line between being very excessive and having too much waste versus being very practical but having no life in my products either. 
These days, there are a lot of companies offering labels and stickers and even packaging tape using materials that are a lot more environmentally friendly. For example, the packaging tape that I use is made from paper and it's water activated, so it's super easy to use, but it's not made from plastic or anything like that either. All these mailers and envelopes will get a return address stamped in the corner. This is something I realized I had to do. And this is something that's really important, especially during holiday season when packages are going lost or missing. Having that return address allows you to receive the package back so you can reship it back out to your customer. Side note, being a business that's run out of my home, I didn't want my personal address to be on each package so I actually pay for a PO box at my local post office so I can have that return address available for my customers. All right, I hope that was helpful for you, especially if you're a small business owner. Kudos to you for clicking on this video and, and trying to get a bit more insight on how to package greeting cards. By no means do I think this is the best or only way to do it. This is just how I'm doing it right now in 2022, but I know that in a few years, things might look very different. In a sense, I hope it looks very different because I hope I'm constantly making better choices each day, improving my materials, improving my workflow. And honestly, the best part of running a small business is being able to be agile and make these iterative changes to your business. If you'd like to see more of my products, please visit salapaper.com. If you like this small business content, I have a few other videos in my small biz playlist that might help you start your own business. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.